of playing a big money game. Four sixes. Five sixes. Ooh. Six sixes. Mm. Oh, this is getting fun. <sighs> it's either you lose or you lose. <laughs> I won twice in a row. Um, six sixes is what you say? Six sixes. <sighs> Liar. I have one. How many do you have? I have one. Two. Two. Three, four. Three. I have two. Five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my god. I could have gone so much higher. Gone I, I, just... well, I could have gone on for a I'm while. Sorry, yeah. You just had <laughs> me. All right. Uh, Toti. Uh. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to say three twos. I say four twos. Hmm. I want one win. I'm calling you a liar already. Whoa. <laughs> already? That's stupid. <clears throat> That's ballsy. That's a, that's ballsy. Right. Two twos from Drudge. Four. Two twos here. Four. No twos. Um, so that's four in total. I don't have any. I've Shit. already said four twos. Already... Oh wait, twos? Oh yeah. yeah I've got already here. lost. Here. <laughs> quick round quick round's a good round I fucked around and found out yeah alright All right. Tang you're up first what's that reaction Torty? nothing don't worry about that <laughs> Wow, I three, can't believe Tony got six sixes. <laughs> That's crazy. What are the odds? Three threes. Three threes. <laughs> three Seven fours. Whoa. Oh. But... Also, anyone can call anyone a liar at any point. Oh, we changed that? Okay. Order. All right. Then you're a fucking liar. Oh, yeah, no. It's more. <laughs> ah! You said how many fours? French has two fours. I have three. Seven fours. fours. I've got I have two. Four fours. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> three in total. Four fours. One. Wow, you've already broken it then. <laughs> One. That was bad. That was bad. Luck. Even better. No, right, so we can we can call anyone a liar then. You're playing with five players. You need to get your bids high if you want to make high bids. There's five players. That's so much dice. Yeah, we we haven't been going over six. <coughs> we have twenty five <laughs> dice on the board. Yeah. We're all chicken shit. Five ones. <laughs> Hey, I went players to seven. Two players getting up to fours is five not. ones when already. Alright. What'd you say? Five ones. Uh three twos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> So the mind games begin. <clears throat> I don't six like twos. it when you equal half. Six twos. Eight fives. What's happening? Oh, okay. Four fives. Good. Ooh. Are just two fives. <laughs> two. Fuck. So, oh, wow, yeah. Any fives. <clears throat> yes. He did it. He won. <laughs> Holy shit. You got a W. He got a dub. Well done, Tang. For once in my miserable <laughs> life. A W. A win. What's a W? 
It's short it's, uh, for a winning. It, yeah, it's a symbol that looks like... It looks like two it. Vs. Ah, well done. So it should be a double V. <laughs> It looks like this. It looks like this. <clears throat> All right. Mm. Well, go ahead, Dredge. Seven ones. <laughs> All right. Three twos. <laughs> I'm not touching Four that. I'm <laughs> not touching that, Dredge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see seven twos. Seven twos? Ooh. Holy shit. Liar. Fuck Six, it. Three, Fuck seven. it. Liar. Oh. I have zero. Two twos. One. Four, five. None. Fucking liar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, threes and fives. <clears throat> so you would have noticed there was only one one with dredge. Wait. You fucker. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear I saw somebody do this at the tavern once. Mm -hmm. Can you spin the glass and stack your dice? You can. You can do like a... If that's what I've been doing, how to pick yeah. up my dice one-handedly. I you can't do it very it. good. Oh. Shake it. And then drop. Yeah. Technically, that isn't that this, something God. that... Isn't that something that can happen in Liar Says? If one of your dice lands on the other, I actually subtracts a dice. Oh. Oh. That well, could that's be interesting. Dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, is if you were... If you rolled it like that, and then you deliberately stacked it, if you know what you were doing, if you get one dice on top of the other and it covers the thing, it takes away a dice. So you would that only have like four a dice. Trick. Mm. And you might have been scammed, Morden. Who's going? <laughs> no, I was dealing yeah, with other who dialogue. lied? Oh, you lost. You. Your turn. <clears throat> Five ones. Seven ones. <sighs> Five twos. Six twos. <laughs> Seven twos. I'm gonna regret it, but I'm gonna call you a liar. Ooh. Okay. One, two. One. One, two. One, two. One, three. <laughs> how many tanks, how many twos do you have tang? None. Oh, there's oh, only four. Oh, I was getting <laughs> too Listen, cheeky. I was, try I was trying to give the dramatic build up. <laughs> Thanks. This is right. one of you had one, two. If I had so much as two, you would have been fine. Wait, no. Three, you would have been fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. I thought you had two. Get back up there, cup. Stop yeah. doing that. I keep doing a magic trick, and I don't mean to put the cup back. <laughs> All right. Ooh, okay. There's Gabron. Oh, Gabron? Yeah, he just oh, he's walked off that way. He went past. Yeah, he's heavy. He's having a heavy breath. He had a hard time breathing. Huh? He's feeling like. Uh... I think that just means he's upset. Let's uh, sprinted. finish this hand. I'm gonna bail okay. out after yeah. this one. <clears throat> okay. Um, four fours. I guess you and me are playing. With what you? dice? These are my dice. I have my own. I love liar's dice.
How many fours did you say? Sure, go. Uh, four fours? That was it? Yeah. I think that's I'll what you six. said. Six <clears throat> fours. I'm feeling confident. Eight fours. I think you're a fucking liar. Nine fours. I, th I definitely think you're a liar, but I'm calling him a liar first. <laughs> oh, okay. How many fours? Has Two three. fours. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fuck. Close. Two fours. Alright. <laughs> Fair enough, Mr. Tang. Alright, two words for me. <laughs> Thanks for uh, teaching me how to play again. It's really fun so game, long. yeah. I forget how fun it is. Yeah, oh, that yeah. was great. By the way, we'll have to do this again. Mm -hmm. Stretch. Perfect. I'm going to find their bomb, alright? He's over there. Oh, he's right there. Perfect. Do you like I feel like there is okay. context. I feel like there's context Animal to this. Keep going. Keep Animal going. You're not making yourself. You okay? No, Dorothy, I'm really not. What's wrong? The lost ring's gone. Huh? The elf that wrote the letter? <sighs> he wrote the letter. Oh, you wrote the letter and left it on uh, your table. Yeah, you should be left for you. For me. For me? Yeah. Yeah. If that, if that coward didn't have respect for me, he'd still be here. I'm playing babysitter right now. <sighs> Shariq? I need to speak to Dazim tonight, if he's available. He's not around right now, but I can let him know. Need something done? Yes. We need to make a decision about something. Hmm. <clears throat> I'll let him know if I see him. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you guys like that. Lies Dice is pretty fun. I hope it wasn't too boring to just watch. <laughs> yeah, I do like Lies Dice. Everyone's doing to him now? Yeah. The game of deception. Wasn't the character interactions? Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Kyla getting stun locked by Dredge. What do you have under there? <laughs> I gotta take a, a very short break. I'll be right back, chat.
She comes. No burning, not good. Watch out, boy. <laughs> Watch out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you drinking alone? The water. Oh, that sucks. Hey, you pick up Lies Dice real quick. Good place. I first time I've actually ever played that. <clears throat> yeah. But I understood the gist of it. Yeah. That was good. It's good fun. Nice and simple. I didn't I didn't know that you had I thought that you if you didn't guess the exact number, you were out. No, I didn't know no, that no. you only had to guess at least It's like five a weird version or of at least Jack. seven dice at the yeah. table. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Was it in in all my years? I haven't had a lot of games to play. Oh, I haven't played a lot of games. Well, maybe the I'll. Closest to that I've actually come to playing a game is boulder tossing. Maybe I'll uh, get you some dice for your birthday or something. I don't know a birthday. Mm, maybe I'll get it for you for the solstice. I guess that works. Yeah, I'm just looking for an excuse at this point. Take care, Tang. Fair enough. How did you do that? They're the same way here. that I did this. <gasps> I'm going insane. No, you're not. I'm already insane. I'm not stealing, I'm leaving money, right. just so you know. Three ones. Ah, four ones. Three threes. Three fours. Two fours. I one four. Two fours, you lose the dice. Crack. Crack. Roll.
Hyde. Is Mr. Dredge. Mr. Dredge Dredge. <sighs> Thank you, Crossfit. Thank you. Thank you for your read. They're sitting up there on the roof. Fuck, I want to go sit with them. Damn it. I'm just gonna... Fuck it. Haven't done this in a bit. Didn't even spill a drop. What feet? Where? Your feet. I don't I don't see any feet. Sit up. You will see feet. Knock, knock. A bottle of wine by your feet. Oh boy. Your dredge brought your drink. It's right next to your foot. Drink? <laughs> you didn't see that. He just plopped a pillow down underneath her. So that when she goes back down, it's a soft pillow. That's water. Just... That's that's the the non-burn stuff. You can only. Well, fine then. If you don't want it, lay back down. Just trust me. I have a plan. Have a good day today. No. No, we wait. What the fuck is going on with that boat? That's an unseen too. What? Oh. One of the boats. Yeah, that one. Hmm. Pirates, man. Just uh, keep an ear out for snoring. Does she even snore? No clue, but I'm gonna check it anyway. Harry, would you like some of my D R I N K? I don't drink. Don't worry, it's only A L C H Co uh L is being wrapped up in a burrito of a blanket. Yoink. No, somebody stop no, him. No, 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 no. I'll get the pillow. You guys are such nice friends. <clears throat> Too bad she hates me.
What made your day rough, if you don't mind me asking? I had something planned. And it kind of just went up in shit. Huh. <clears throat> yeah, that tends to happen. I rented the top floor of the bathhouse for me and Venora. Uh huh. <clears throat> and then Ella got barfed on and just joined in, I guess. Ah, uh, she, um. <clears throat> cock blocked you. Wouldn't be the first. <laughs> really hoping to make an impact tonight. Something, but I guess not. No, something, something. No plan no. survives contact with the, you know, drunk friend. Well, if she was sober. It's only because she got puked on. Mm. <clears throat> Cost me five silver, too, for that room. That's... It's pretty much used on somebody that despises me. Where is Venora in that now? I don't know. I... <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just exhausted. Mm. I found the people that have the best relationships are the ones that roll with that sort of stuff. Make a fun time out of it. But I definitely understand your frustration. I mean, fuck. <laughs> Setting all that up to have it, you know, <clears throat> go away like that, it's gonna be rough. I mean, I've done it multiple times and just said, bring whoever you want in there with you and I'll watch the door. So the first time I expected it to be alone. Maybe she's just a little aloof. I think you're doing all the right things. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. Feel that way. Never does. Never does. <laughs> How about you, Tang? Having a good evening? Love you. Oh, I've been having a shit week. Well, yeah. But I'm trying to stay positive. Hopefully tomorrow things will actually start working. Hmm. Been having a lot of things in the works for a long time and none of them have been able to move forward. I know the feeling. Before everything actually starts being set on fire. We'll actually be able to get it done. Hmm. I'm going to 
to do a couple of rounds and then watch out for the apothecary. Sure. All right. Maybe I'm out of practice. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Uh, I mean... <clears throat> She's a very interesting creature. You know that already. I think even if you were in practice, it would be very different with her. I think this is the kind of thing you feel out as you go. themselves at least have you like laid it out to her I don't want to push her I'm giving her time <clears throat> maybe just saying like hey but I, I considering wanna... that After I lost Dwight, he was really the only person here that I had any sorts of relations with. Kind of like a brother. Oh. He's really all I had here. And now he's gone. Thinking about moving on. Because I don't want to lose hope on it. <clears throat> Maybe just sit her down and say, let's just you and me go for a walk or something, you know. I think she misses those subtle hints. She's always busy. I'll try. She needs people like you. Like me, a honorless deserter? <clears throat> Wouldn't say honorless. It's pretty much what happens when you desert.
I only have one action. Can render your whole life. Condemn you. It very rarely does it save you. The day I'm not being hunted is the day I... Well... I can actually believe that. I understand that. What? Being hunted or? Mostly being hunted. A life looking over your shoulder is no life. Due to your specific relations, or...? <laughs> yes, and... I suppose. <clears throat> I get the, the double, sometimes even triple dip. In the whole, people are trying to kill you department. I mentioned means people like you, strong leaders. She's struggling to fill that role herself. She lacks confidence, and from what I overheard this morning about a tear wanting to flee, she needs to step into the role that she's been put into, I guess. And she'll definitely need someone like you to guide her. If you care enough about her in that way. I'm no leader. <clears throat> what do you mean you're no leader? I've only served. I've never been in a leader position. I can teach to fight, but... When it comes to actually leading... Not exactly experienced on that matter. Weren't you like this amazing god or something like that? Believe it or not, I wasn't always as good at fighting. Only when I had to deal with unexpected guests. I learned how to fight them. Well, yeah, everyone learns. That's what made <clears throat> me how I am. Our past That's is the forge that. 18 encounters. Well, Liliana spoke very highly of you. Always. So if she sees you in that position, I don't know, maybe you're being hard on yourself. Maybe you need to step up with her, with Venora, and lead. To get through a stone wall before I can do that. One thing I learned in my past No matter how much they brag about it, or how intimidating it looks, no lock is truly impregnable. There's always a way. That's some saying. You get what I mean. 
enough time. I do. Effort. A little finesse. And the right tools. You can get anywhere you want. Guess at this point it's what breaks first. Hmm. My hope or the last line that I have. The eternal struggle. same but she had people multiple people while I was alone here till Dwight came and of course he <laughs> created more of a headache than problem solving but he was a good man. Didn't deserve what happened. No one said it. Not a white before. No her. It was hollow, the victory we got after it, you know. <clears throat> yeah, we got the Capitano and dealt with all of his rank structure, but they're not coming back. Did you see Naraz anywhere? No, but I'm hunting him. Because he's the one that beat him to a bloody pulp. Yeah. He's the one who threw Severick in the forge. And... Well. And you'll notice she won't have her cloak on? Please come inside. Please. Both of you. Come downstairs. There's something that I think Shriek would want to hear. Where is he? Okay, no, it's okay. Let me put this over here real quick. You know, it's her clothes. She too is drenched in oil. Yeah, burning oil. What the fuck happened to you? What happened? Um, okay. So, like Faye and her curiosity, as always, I saw Sanders leaving town. Fuck. I can look. Okay. Is there so anybody else Sanders... want in here or just shoo him away? Okay. 
Toll centers, we're going to keep this to ourselves, but I, I think this is something we need to at least tell Sharik, because this is important. No? Wait. Yes. Okay. So, wait until you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. So, I'll follow Sergeant Sanders. He was leaving on foot with a backpack on his back, like he was in a hurry to get out of town. So, of course, I was curious. Followed him all the way. Looked like he was going to go to Bolerno. He passed the embassy. Didn't even... He went down in the trench, literally to hide himself from being seen by the embassy. He follows them. We come to the shack near Bolano. He's sitting there pacing about, pacing about, and then he disappears. Well, I told her, I said, we come this far. We need to find out what's going on. Go find on. Nowhere to be seen. I find a trap door underneath a rug. I go on below. Lo and behold, we find in the bottom of it that elf that runs the Mercenaries Guild dead. Picked apart. Looked like it was Naraj's doing. Well, we know it's definitely Naraj now because of the conversation the men, before we knew it, men came back. They were upstairs, started dousing the place with oil. Luckily, they saw a patrol and they said, we'll come burn it in the morning. Well, we were listening to the conversation. They were talking about Naraj was always the brains of the operation or a lot smarter than the Capitano. We'll take up with his lot. We'll go across the channel. The Black Rock. But also... They had dealings with the Redods. Which Redod? The only Redod that I trust right now is... Amem. So I think... The, and the, how the, you were talking about how the Capitano was trying to say something, how he's gagged. And Kovai's conveniently want to execute him. Who else of the Redods has more to gain from the Capitano than anybody? The Lesser Son. If, if this conversation we were hearing were right about how the Redodge were involved and how they were cutting ties from everything just to head over the Blood Rock, I'm sorry, it points to Kovaz. Would be my first assumption of who was dirty in the Redodge. Other than... And, and, and I can tell it was definitely Redodge's handiwork because the elf was picked apart. There was hardly anything left of him. And obviously Sanders was very shaken up about it, like he was very close to this mercenary elf that runs the Mercenaries Guild. And I remember, I don't know if recollect, I remember somebody saying that the red-haired guy from the guild acted very cautious around a mem for some reason or another, I don't know why. I think it was just mainly the Redods in general. Maybe he knew something that was going on but never said anything. But I, I don't know what to do, because Sanders is very shaken up about it. He he looked at me and said, I might have um you, I might have a favor I need to call in from you later. I said, Well if you believe anybody, believe what Tim Tazim said shed your fucking armor and join the side that's gonna fight for you, not against you. Alright. So, they were going to burn the place down. I don't know when they intend to burn it, but it's soaked with oil. Okay. I don't know if y'all could... I don't know if y'all could catch any of Rajaj... Uh, Naraz. Raj's men before... when. Yeah, Naraz... Whatever. When he goes to burn it. I don't know when they intend to burn it. Alright, I'll think on it. Thank you. Okay. But if anybody... You're the most... Likely one that needs to be told. Without regards, I'm just trying to keep them calm enough so it can settle at this point. It needs to because that poor man can't handle anymore. You really can't. Yeah. 
What? Why are you looking at me like that? Ghost thing I didn't tell you about. If you're free. Something... Something good. Good news. Well, partially. I figured. <clears throat> Sand has left the city <clears throat> not too long ago. Left. He was carrying a backpack. He was going to meet someone. Miss Venora thought it would be a great idea to follow him, her and Wolf. He followed him out past the embassy. Looked like he was heading on the way to Belerno. Made his way to this shack in the middle of fucking nowhere, apparently. <laughs> Went in and disappeared. So Venora thought it was a good idea to follow him. Went in after with him. Went down into a basement through a trap door hidden behind a rug. <clears throat> and found the leader of the merchant, uh, the Merc Guild. Butchered. Taken apart. Oops. Not long afterwards, a group of men showed butchered. up. Said they were from, well, related to Naraz. Lieutenant Naraz. The one that fucking got away. Apparently they started to, uh... Douse the whole place in oil. They were going to set it on fire, but a patrol went past. They said they'll come back in the morning to destroy it. This stays between us, obviously. What's the point of killing a mercenary? I don't know. Oh, apparently he had ties to um, the the barons themselves. <clears throat> And they believe people kept the, 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 the group of people there were bragging that Naraz was much smarter than the Capitano and that they had connections to the Barons, which could be what Kovaz was trying to hide. Seems like one rat has escaped our trap. Yes, I've been tracking him, trying no, to find no, him. I've this is the first hint that I found on him. What do you, you have an idea why this might be the case? What do you mean, not Apparently, in some shack out the learn away in the middle of bumblefuck nowhere they found some mercenary butchered in there stupid fucking bed sheets sorry i can't wear my cloak because it's soaked with oil when they tried to kill us or tried to Sorry. burn the place she was there she's first hand account oh everyone's coming <clears throat> what happened <sighs> okay Of course, uh, Lisa was with me at the time. I saw Sanders fleeing the city with a backpack on on him. He, like, he was running like mad, like, <coughs> getting out of town, get out of town. So I followed him. He went past the embassy, making sure he wasn't being seen. He, he followed in the ditch. We followed him. We found this shack. Uh, I waited for a time, and then he disappeared, so I went up to the shack couldn't find him anywhere so we found a trap door went down the trap door Lisa lit we found a man butchered it was the the, the red hair elven of the of the mercenaries guild it was Raja, it was Raja whatever Raja's doing because I could tell no the way he was picked apart yeah he was butchered God damn it. when does anyone know who this person is I lost him he wasn't the, the cop there. Come here. The Capitano's right hand man, basically, I guess you would say. Son of Ross a was bitch. the right hand man. Alozarin was a good man who helped run the mercenaries guild. Mm. He, he left me a letter before he left. I thought he just he got butchered. I should have told you where he went. I <laughs> think oh. I'm so sorry. Pretty sure everyone online is in here this room now. <laughs> Sanders seemed beside himself like 
he really cared for him a lot. Like he was stuttering about his thump, a lot of things, and then all of a sudden he started mentioning things that made things, some things click together, and then all of a sudden we started hearing them come back. Uh, from what Lisa could tell, it was men in heavy plate. I wanted to come he here and rock, tell Tazim about it secretly and privately so he could be like, go deal with it. That, but he didn't need the Capitano can't do that. as long as he <clears> had <throat> this psychopath that knew how things worked and they didn't have to rely on the Redods anymore. Why would they mention the Redods? Does that mean one of the Redods is crooked? That they had a hand in it that they knew? And that's why I mentioned to. Uh, Shriek here it's time for me to shut up because I don't get a chance to speak, to speak in these meetings. And Kovaz conveniently want to murder him quickly, get him dead. What if he knew what was going on? And why these people were trying to tie up loose ends and get out of town as quickly as possible? Before we all You're burn. Making a lot of assumptions. I know, but who else in the Redaz is there? Still some people that we don't know of that might be crooked. They were looking into that. The guards told me so. They were looking to see if there was any more left because of all the all the guards, the good ones that have been getting killed in the streets. Well, obviously they're taking what's left after they burn this shack. They're taking whatever they have on them, and they're about to go across the canal to Blackrock. Coming back. What? For those who haven't noticed yet. What? Both Banor and Wool are still drenched in oil. <sighs> oh, oh, sorry, no, fuck. I need bugs to not just fight. <sighs> You're starting to sound like what Sanders was saying. He was mumbling the same things that if something came to light, it would have. People would have fought for him. Let me start I'm not sure saying. what to make of this. El Osrin was a good man. You may not have known him, may have dealt with him a small bit, but take it from someone who has lived here for a very long time. He was one of the better ones. He was. <sighs> fuck, fuck. El Osrin, he was scared for his life. He came to me afraid last night he um, spoke about leaving the reason he was so frightened was because he thought someone was watching him someone was watching the mercenaries guild watching him tracking his movements he mentioned talking with with Sarah and trying to get her out because he knew someone was there Watching what was happening. Why? Why would someone watch a random mercenary? He's protected by the guild, protected by the barons, uh. the dynasty. I know, Basil. I know. I know. Alosrin. He was part of the original mercenary group that Baron Jodar took with him. When he was assassinated. What? So that's why why people said he's uneasy I'm around them. A mem. Can you say that one more Alos time? Alosrin was a part of a mercenary group that Baron Jodar personally took to his meeting with Dirivex. And when they got there, some hooded masked figure and thirty Mercenaries and crossbowmen showed up, put daggers and bolts to their necks and demanded they either die or they take part in what they were about to do on pain of death. Oh my god. <sighs> Fuck. Arazan is a good man, but he also... He had no other choice. He wanted Wait, to it... live. Part of the same mercenaries that were with the Baron Jul'dar when he died. Yes. How is he still alive? 
The rest of them ran or were dead. He was the last one. He knew, or whoever forced him to attack the Baron knew, that if he said anything, he would be strung up in the arena by his entrails, by both the brothers and Mefru, for his part in it, even if he did not actually kill the Baron Jodar, which I am still not convinced of, despite the fact that he babbled it enough that he said he did it. He confessed to me about three weeks after it happened. He came in babbling, incoherent, He's the worst I'd ever seen him. I fed him drinks, tried to get him to calm down, and it You've just came known? out. Yes, I've known. The are, demon... are you an idiot? Are you a fool? No. A fool? Really? You tell me, Tazim. What do you think would be better? Killing? One mercenary who may not even shot at Baron Jodar, or the man who put a dagger to his neck, forced him to be a part of it, and is the real reason Baron Jodar is dead. If the man dead. was there, he should have seen something. He might have been able to he tell us nothing. If we were able to sit I and question him, we might have known. days to get it out of him, Tazim. He didn't see anything. The person who was commanding was masked and hooded and did not reveal themselves. He might he have know known anything. something else, might have been something, a piece of information we might be able to make sense of. Why would you keep this quiet from us? And he was and he was on the roof torching something. I saw him burning something. What? That's what, when I was there on the pier, I looked up and books. I saw him on top of the structure over there. He was on top. It looked like he was burning and stomping something out. But we thought... It, we kind of yelled up at him. He wasn't even paying attention to us. We were on the piers there. We were watching him up there. He was lighting something with a torch. He was convinced that, that whoever was watching him was a part of this conspiracy and closing in and that they were going to try and shut him up. So yes, he might have panicked and just done things to try and cover his tracks. Tazim, I understand that you are angry about me keeping this to one. What would have been burned? If what you're saying is true, it has to pertain to this. Which means he had something! What could have been? There might we still be look something for there. Remnants? Something that didn't quite fully get burned? This close to the <laughs> sea? Something's burnt and it's not but ash. I'm sure it's blown away by now. You can look, I guess. I would have liked to ask the man himself. I would have too, Tazim, but he was out of his mind with fear. He's not like you or me. He was just barely holding on for months. He could have testified. Testified to what? To what? What did he know, Tazim? That's Dude. a great question, girl. But perhaps we would have known if we were able to speak with him about it. And he <clears throat> would have been cut from neck to navel for his part in he what happened. You, and he survived as long as he did. Because I know that he was a good man, Tazim. He doesn't deserve death just because he was a part of this, something so horrific. But if he knew something and we found out what it was, even if it to him he thought it wasn't something connected, with everything we've discovered thus far, we might have finally figured out who in the keep is the issue. If he was one of the mercenaries, that means he was hired via contract. And one of the biggest issues that we have is the robber baron himself has told Vezrin that someone encouraged him to bring those mercenaries. He would have known. Do you think he would have confided in Sanders something more than what we know? Because he was really distraught at seeing his d friend's death. Like, really distraught. I highly doubt it. But it's worth a ask, I guess. I'd like to pose a different friend. question. Hmm. Makes sense for him being distraught. You, you <laughs> followed Sanders to this place. Yes? All right. All right, it looked like they were going to flee. I he said something about they were going to take a boat. I knew where they were going. 
can see him leave. Okay. He left right before we started playing Liar's Dice. The only other the only other lead you would have is to capture whoever comes back to burn the place down. And for that, it could be just anybody, just to do their job and go. Naraz is the one that butchered him, then he is tied into this somehow. Right, and he went to Black Rock. This we mentioned Black Rock. Which means he knows something. Knew something. Exactly. If they were that afraid of him being alive, he knew something damning. Exactly. We know where his men are going to be, maybe even him in the morning. I doubt that they're going to come back and risk that. That would be stupid beyond belief. Except they wanted to burn it. You, s you said Naraz was the one that went after, right? Hmm. Who knows anymore? You said it was... It was the one... It was that one... It was that one that you didn't like. The one that would hurt him a lot and laugh about it. That one. That's the one that butchered the mercenary. Um, and they said that they were all going to meet up in Black Rock. And they even praised him as being more smarter than the Capitano. Fucking cause. Oh, uh, Whatever this is, that whatever we need to figure out, we need to figure it the fuck out quick. Maybe you can show us where he was burning the papers. There might be a single scrap of something. I... It was a smuggler's den outside of Valerno. There is, um, i show you what you're building. Yeah, it's out on the piers there, on top. It's right across from the, uh, apothecary Judgment where he was burning. Cruelty, but I'm not going to apologize for trying to protect a good man. I understand what you, you wanted to do. With all due respect, my new friend. All right. Whatever you did I'm going to, to go check this. Did not work. I'm going to go check to see all. if there's any scraps, anything. The province was the way it was. Go and check if you can. Take care of you. You want to protect the map. The people I want to protect too. <sighs> but that is not apart from taking action. Risks have to be taken. His safety. We could have tried to find a way to finagle it. If what he had would be enough to, to, to figure out who put the barony in danger, Jildar's death is a massive piece of the puzzle. I we looked everywhere we could. Doesn't matter. There's no there. reason to argue over it. They the took even his boots. They took everything. What happens now and next is what matters. What happens next? As we go up through that keep, and we don't come down until you are Lord, and I am Castellan, or as close as we both can be to those positions. The problem is, a man will not see us. He keeps refusing audiences. He's, he's freaking out about the robber baron ever since his meeting with him. God knows what Kovaz is up to. Probably useless as can be, because he certainly hasn't been rallying the people or the men. Until he agrees to talk to us, unfortunately, <coughs> as much as I would like to kick the Lordling's door down and make him see sense, I can't. <coughs> Alarm, it's all over Wasn't the that the fallback I believe plan? I just heard it now. Yes. It was, but we've gotten far enough where things should be different, but... <laughs> Amem's not gonna say no. He's not... That, that was the hope, is that Amem would tell them to turn around. Because we had yeah. things secure and he didn't need them, and the cons would outweigh the pros. But because of Kovaz's fucking colossal fuck-up! And deciding to make war with the robber baron, by seizing the mines, which still is of no value to us because no one's working them yet. The robber baron has returned in kind by seizing the main road 
and murdering the garrison there and planting his own men there. We have no way in and out. And now Sawtooth is choking us by sea. The Trident farmlands to the north is where all of our fucking food came from. Weeks, maybe, before the pressure's on with starvation. Now the only hope that I would have had is if he didn't take this action. I would have been able to convince a man from he... what we did that we have the means to secure the province. We would have shown that by dismantling the Capitano and his bullshit. But because of what Kovaz has done, it has thrown us into chaos and forced a conflict we were not ready for. And the Baron my men, Gerbum can tell you, lost his cool. And today, they officially declared war on the robber baron's insurrection. Oh my now conflict is inevitable. I have no room to say, do not let your only source of manpower land. Now I have to figure out how to mitigate, control, and I don't even know if we can do that. I don't. Dream. Yes. Sand is the dark side. The boy knows something. Sanders is outside. He just won't come in unless. Bring him in. We can. Bring we him in. Don't let him stand up. He said for too long. Bring him in. He said the only <laughs> person that will allow him in would be the blacksmith. So I am waiting here. until Tazim goes and brings him in himself. He will not listen like to me. Right? Fuck's sake. Maybe I should go out there and fucking tell him to come right the fuck on there because he can listen to that me. Was the hope. I yes, need to think about this, it, my lord. Yes, you know, complete do. change of if battlefield. You want to. Mm. Take my pen <sighs> and okay. Either that boy is incredibly naive, or he is a very Come cunning on. problem. And I don't know which one yet. <sighs> Have yourself a seat. You're probably gonna I'll need stand. it. Alright. Lights out. If I'm bad so it makes perfect sense. Do it. Second. Oh, I never would expect. What is it, Sanders? I'm guessing she's told you most of it already by now. We're aware. This Naraz, how badly do you want him dead? I'm going to be honest with you, Naraz is even less on the back burner than I can possibly imagine. When we get our hands on him, we'll hang him and we'll hang him high. But he is not the issue right now. And if they fled to Blackrock, we can't get our hands on them anyway. Unless you know someone going to Blackrock. Because I certainly don't. Um. We do. What the fuck are you talking about? Do you really want to hear this now, or do you want to hear what Sanders has to say? Because I'll spill my guts again, Tazim. What priority? Sanders first. One step at a time, let's Narayan, start with some. If not himself, a group of his lackeys are going to be going back to that shit shack sometime in the morning. Even if he's not there, people who know him will be. Holy shit, this is what I was saying 15 minutes ago. Come into my head. <clears throat> One. It would be immensely stupid for them to come back to try and burn something down. Two. 
If we take the first thing into the back of our minds and realizing that this man has survived up to this point and kept other fearful men in control, he must be cunning. What if <coughs> this was said purposely to be heard just in case there were witnesses? This man sided with the Capitano, that makes him a traitor, no? Of course it does. That's basis for arrest by itself. Are you going to go up to the keep and convince the squabbling barons who won't even accept audiences to go and arrest the two-bit thief, criminal, and murderer? You said anything about them? What do you do with your people? We know concern. that this man is a complete and utter piece of human garbage. That's rich. There's no denying that. And besides... No, he can't go to the Barons. No, not until... Not until I have an answer. No. So no, I'm, you I'm sorry to tell you this. This Naraz is not top of the list. The invasion that's coming our way is top of the list. This little rat will scuttle away to whatever hole he finds, and when we find them, eventually, he will be dealt with. But we do not have the time, coin, or manpower. Even if I could convince the Baron with Gerbum's help, there is a fucking army that is making its way here. That's the concern. That is the focus. What you need to focus on is finding out what the absolute fuck is happening with that embassy. And make sure that the wrong person does not come to control. Because whoever's in that keep, they got that mercenary butchered, has got to be the same one fucking with your kin. It is. It is the same one. Then we need to figure out who it is. It's not about finding out who it is, it's about finding the connection. Remember what I said to you, Blacksmith? Who is the only person who benefited from the Major's death? Several parties would benefit, the elves included. But now think a bit more. Who went and tried his best to make sure that everyone looked at him in a bright light, that he looked like the leader we all needed? Who led the charge to retake land? And when justice had to be served, who made sure they were the first one to give it? before any questions could be asked. These are a lot of assumptions, Sergeant. We don't have any solid proof of what you're saying, and it's a quick way to the gallows for the rest of us. There's Naraz. Who's working directly if for you them. Think if what he says is true. That they're going to come back and risk themselves. They've survived as long as they have for a reason. They let other men die for them. Inconsequential men to their feeling. I highly doubt. I would... I'm confident enough to bet my life on it that if they went to Blackrock, Naraz is not coming back in the morning to burn down a fucking shed in the woods. Then how about I bet my life on it? Go ahead. I'm not going to stop you or your ilk. I'm telling you why it makes no sense. And, if it was said, in case anyone was listening, when you go there, you will probably be killed. I can't trust my own people to come with me for this. This is a fool's errand, Sergeant Sanders. your 
your last chance at getting this man to justice. Is there anything I'm saying imparting upon you? Or are you so blinded by revenge? We cannot risk he people for killed. something that could be a trap. He just killed one of the only people in this town. One of few that I actually called friend. Well, I'm glad you've caught up to the rest of us, Sergeant. Because this isn't the first time that any of us have lost people, not only to these guards here, but to others. Unfortunately, it happens. And if you get tunnel vision and run towards them blindly, you're going to get yourself killed or people you ask to come with you killed. Everything needs a plan and time. And that is too much of a risk. It's past the embassy. There is no Radar military from there to the edge of the province. All it would take is for us to walk there to investigate something, and another tip found its way to the robber baron, and suddenly was surrounded by orange and steel. I am sorry and about your wrong? friend, but I am not willing to risk anyone for this. It may just be your only chance at getting all of this figured out. My only your chance. All of our last chance. If he is the connection I think he is, it will open the floodgates on everything that's been happening these past few months. It might just be enough to stop it. <clears throat> Nothing I say is going to change your mind. I feel like I could say the same statement. Yes, well, Sergeant, the difference between yourself and myself is we've gotten as far as we have from my planning. There's a baseline there. I do things a particular way for a reason. It's to try and keep everyone alive. And even the most careful plans do not always work. We lost someone. I sent a surgeon with that group to make sure that they would be all right. But sometimes plans do not work. There is an associated risk and you must be sure that every life that you have is spent properly. Every single life is spent properly. Because to achieve what we're trying to do, we have to put pieces on the board and tell ourselves, I might lose all of these. But the outcome, is it worth it or not? The information you've given me is shaky at best. I do not think that this cunning man who has survived past the Capitano and capture is going to risk himself to try and burn this place down. If they've left, what do they have to hide? They don't care about the province. They've left, Sergeant. This is either a trap or they're going to change their mind. To come back across the channel in the morning when boats can be seen on the water to burn it you're being led there. But they didn't know anyone else was there. They were only expecting him. Somebody talk sense to this boy. Are you sure they were only expecting him? Aye. You sure. and Sarah talked to him the most. He was saying that people were watching. I would listen to Tazim on this one. Sanders, please. Especially if they plead the Black Caucus where pirates and everybody who wants to disappear goes to anyways. They wouldn't want to even If they to want to create chaos, then 
Your death will give them just that. Think on that for a moment. Yes, you are the highest position right now of security. Sanders. <clears throat> you realize... Charlie, who's the next highest ranking person inside of the embassy? The current standing CEO is Captain Gregory. Before him... Who is the next him is above you? Say that'd be Lieutenant Atler, sir. Lieutenant Atler, the one we're all suspicious of. So let's say you die following a fool's errand. Well, goodness, at least the lieutenant is there to become head of fucking security. You see what I'm saying? I see what you mean. Thank you. I think you should be more worried about that than you think. How many of the lads at your surgery saw you leave? Desertion is a capital punishment. You've so given them exactly what do. they need to do. remove you. Highlight yourself in the wrong way. And you'll meet the firing squad. Why you burn? <laughs> He's right. If you re if you really want to do your friend justice, then survive long enough to make a trip to Black Hawk eventually. This is exactly why I don't talk in these conversations anymore. <clears throat> So that's just it. You're given an opportunity to find one final lead that you need, and you just let it go? This is an assumption on your behalf, Sergeant Sanders. Everything has been an assumption from this point forward. Nothing's ever guaranteed. Hell, everything I've you done these last... To send people to something that could be an ambush because you overheard something said and decide that is enough evidence. Everything that we've done here, we've waited until we can get as much uh, uh, non-conflicting evidence as possible, different threads leading to the same spot before we dared make a move. Because this is the only way this can be handled. You can ask a bum if we do it wrong, we will hang. If this person persons as important as you think they are, and they are tied to the keep. You highlighting yourself or getting caught, and someone being able to give a story about what you did, like desertion, it's over for you and those that you are protecting. Do you think a new head of security, with the intentions of Lieutenant Adler, would not purge the clinic? Concerning yourself too much or taking revenge for someone who is dead and not enough with staying alive on you and the people in that clinic, according to Miss Ladia, need you to survive. You have a responsibility, Sergeant. And I'm sorry, but you cannot be selfish and throw it away. If you think that I have not felt this way, or anyone else in this room, look at their faces, and it will tell you that they have all had to choose the bigger picture of a personal revenge. We understand your loss. But I'm not willing to inflict more on us off of a whim.
We know where he's going. And a couple of people just stutter stepped at me and put forward that they know someone going to Black Rock. I can't wait to hear this. But perhaps that is another realistic opportunity. Take it from someone who has dealt with acts of revenge for well over 200 years. As I reckon up, sometimes the most immediate option is not the wisest option. We know where the man is. Put it a different way. If we deal with the other problems here, if we deal with everything else, if we work together properly, we find out whoever it is and they keep us as responsible. They are the one you should be worrying about. The one pulling the strings, not the ones doing the deeds. Catch them, you'll catch the other one. What I've been trying to say is if you your catch goal. this one, you have everything you need to get him. The problem is there's no guarantee. That's the problem. Sanders, for now, just... Get everything first, okay? Don't forget your pain. Use it to help temper your actions moving forward. You'll get your chance at this Naraz. It's not about Naraz anymore. It's about making sure he gets caught. And the best thing to do is to try and work with us rather than against us. In the end, this bastard will hang. If you are so gung-ho to get yourself killed, Sergeant, I'm sure you can find volunteers to go do this with you. But if you do this, and you're wrong and you get them killed, I have no further words to say about that. Let's hope I'm right. Have a good night. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Sarah, can you give us an Empire build that is stolen? He's a boy. He's a boy who just lost his best friend. Exactly. I understand yeah. his pain, but making this action is going to cause nothing but mistakes. This man escaped and the Capitano didn't. He read the room better than the captain did. You know as well as I do that usually the most cunning man in the room is not the one sitting on the throne. Oh, Master Shepard. The Ra's doing the cut and run. I do not think we're safe. Naraz fucking... Sorry, <clears throat> did Gava fucking look at me when he said that? Someone's been paid, whether they are part of their group or not, to kill whoever shows up or find out who sent them. Because they're not going to want people on their ass. But... There is an option in the future if we want to take it. 
I'm not going to try and sidestep it with him, not now. So, whenever you're ready. My blood pressure's high enough as it is. Might as well keep it then. What do you think mine is at? You go, Daddy. Sharik, you come over here, please. You're going to need to hear this, too. You'll help the Daddy Sharik need to hear this. You'll find out in just a moment, Tazim. You won't be happy, but I'm going to give you as much information as I can. The queen was all the bar. Anything. I never thought I'd be making this confession to so many people at once, but you know what? You can't Scrap of paper. Wrong. Look okay. like you may be a dad names on it. It's all burnt to shit. That's all I got. It's, it's nothing. Something. It's something. Dad paper with some names on it. A few weeks ago. Rather, um. One second. Where did this come from? The rooftop where they said they saw him burning shit. Yeah, where saw, mm -hmm, where saw There's that. a lot of ash. That's the only thing that maybe looked like could still have words on it. Maybe names? First names. Thing to go off of him. No. What isn't? <laughs> to push it towards you and point it out. Remember that name. <laughs> okay. I think it's best if I start talking now. Perhaps so. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, a rather strange-looking gentleman entered the port of Nautis. Perhaps some of you have seen him. He wears a very fancy tricorn hat, a very large overcoat, and carries a multiple belts of pistols across his waist and chest. <laughs> this gentleman that goes by the name of Bartholomew. Captain Bartholomew, he would insist on you calling him. The man's a pirate. And a long time ago, I sailed with him as a part of his crew. Second mate, to be exact. But let's not get particular. Huh? <laughs> Interesting. <sighs> I don't know exactly why he's here. He claims he's searching for something. And I can only assume as to what that truly is. He mentioned something about some kind of treasure. I forget it, what it is off the top of my head. But the important part is he... Apparently, is looking to go back to Blackrock to do some damage to a rival of his and take back a ship that was apparently once his. He offered me a position alongside him with a cut of the profits going to me and all those that join him, as is his code. Anyone who joined would stand to make quite a bit of money. And now that we have this... We're building this into a pitch. You're right. He insisted I go. He insisted Basil go. And what <clears throat> I can't figure out for the life of me is why he insisted that I ask Shurik to go. What do you mean? He mentioned the drow he had seen before. Described him exactly and said he wanted me to talk him into joining us. Going behind your back if necessary, I of course told him that was stupid and he said he didn't really care. You wanted him. How does this man know you? I don't know him, but I can hazard a guess. And see. This will be good. Did some work in Blackrock for a long time. 
I am notorious, though. Huh. To add to a little bit of that, the information being given, whispers from people I know of, is that there is a pirate lord in Blackrock gathering up forces, gathering up other crews to call to his aid. So if this Captain Bartholomew or whatever the fuck is going to fuck with him, I'd say that is a terrible idea to get involved with. That seems like a lot. There's only one reason I'm doing this to you. Because on the surface, yes, I would agree with you that it sounds rather stupid trying to infiltrate Blackrock just for revenge and stealing a ship. But he promised something else. Something that he provided a map for. Something he provided Mm -hmm. evidence for. What do you know of the old sea, Tazim? Same as everyone else. Nothing. Yeah. The storms cover its entire surface. And no one who goes in never comes out again. But what if I were to tell you? How Captain Bartholomew claims that one of the storms has moved and revealed an island. Or perhaps he's right I tell you, he's probably full of shit. Well, I would also tell you that. But then he was also right about the Leviathan Skull that rests just outside Nautis Harbor. Which both Basil and Torty can attest to. Most of us have seen a Leviathan Skull before. Inland. I'm trying to get to the inland. I'm trying to get at the point to see him, that this man, his love is the sea, and if there is one thing I trust him on, it matters of it. The fact he that you say trust, me. and his name in the same sentence is a concern to me. You understand all the different ways so this could go terribly wrong. I worked for that man for a very long time, yes. I am quite well aware, Tazim. But he described ruins on this island. Something he'd never seen before. Not human, not dwarven, not elven, not Dordogar, not drow, nothing he's ever seen before. Not to mention the plethora of natural resources it could offer. So please. Stumbling down the lane of a drunk's ramblings. What was, what was your description of these things? Oh, god damn it. Ruins. Uh, unlike any make he has ever seen before. And trust me, he has seen all kinds of makes. What did the each oh, of the boy. structure around it look like? Did it look like it was something? He didn't be that specific, Miss Renora. All he said was that there was nothing that I had the kiss before. of something related to me. Now I sit back down. <clears throat> but I needed to help do this job for him. Do you say it looked like it had been destroyed? You yourself said that they are a pirate. Yes. That they want to get people to go and steal and cause trouble somewhere else. What, in the name of whatever god you may believe in, do you think that either this is even half worth the risk? But that is not going to throw all of you under the bus as soon as possible. He Just follows a, a code. Of Mark from Baron Zoldar, and he has a code. To address these things, Seven. one at a time. That is the most ridiculous thing that someone can say. You cannot be a bandit thief and pretend you have any sort of code. That is lying to yourself and others. And what do you mean, something written that is from who? In Gradia, it is normally a practice of those baronies that are on the coast to give out letters of mark. Essentially, promises that they work for the baronies' enforcement, and they get certain leniency given to them in case something bad happens. It was signed by Baron Joldar. I know the signature, I know it as well as I do my own. It was legitimate. The Baron employed pirates. Privateer. This one. The privateer. 
And sometimes you don't have any other choice, Azim. We have different standards, I'm afraid. Yes, I am afraid we do. But the fact of the matter is... Mm -hmm. Everything he has shown to me... Everything inside me screams that it is a trick, it is a lie, he's not going to do this. But he keeps giving me evidence and reason to not believe that he is lying to me. As hard as that is to believe. Even if this was the case, what does it matter? There is an army half a mile north! That We're all talking about these fantastical the things that are neither here nor there. And a horde behind that army. Where did he go? Yeah. God. You wanted an explanation. He poofed out for a second. By someone can take you to Black Rock. I give it to you. And if I could help yes, you, and then he started talking to me about magical islands in the middle of the world. Miss Mason. I need to think about the future of the province, Azim. Please excuse me. My friend, you need to make it to tomorrow. That's what you need to do right now, is make it to tomorrow. Because the day that Beaumain decides to march south is a day that we'll be fighting for our lives in the gaps between the city walls. What walls? Can I get a wisdom roll on that island he's speaking of? And what are you trying to figure out? It might be the one that her mission, her final mission, Go to across the big body water to a sunken land where your mother destroyed half the coast. You will find your answers there. With a seven, eight, nine plus two, it, it doesn't seem like it's the same thing. It doesn't seem viable, but you're not sure under the threshold. Why do you think I'm over here? This is the biggest thing that everyone's forgetting. Everyone's talking about the, the barons and all the strange nuances between the murders taking place here. They are issues, yes, but all of them will be moot. <clears throat> if the former Castilian brings his army south. And the only thing between us and them is a ragtag skeletal garrison across the road from a, an unruly, radical-controlled, imperial garrison! So, so you need to extract the robber baron. You either need a lot more easy. troops, or we need to kill him. No, it's not that easy. No, but we cannot kill him. He needs to be captured, and brought here and executed by the Baron Amem. And the Baron Amem needs to offer amnesty to every single soldier that was beguiled by his charisma and told if they return to their posts, they will be forgiven. This destroys the insurrection's chain of command and it gives them a way to retreat. It gives these men a way to back out, to survive. And I guarantee you, 90% if more will take that. They will not want to die on that hill alone. If you corner a bunch of men, they will fight to the death because they know they're going to die anyway. If you give them a route to flee, if you give them a chance to escape, the morale will crack first. This is no different. Um, don't we still have a favor with the drows? Would they not be a good help in this situation? Really? And you trust them to follow through on it? No. I trust Sarah being able to pull off what she needs to. But that needs to be used for something else. We can <sighs> capture the robber baron. That 
is entirely possible. We have the connections and means to make it happen. But the Baron of Mem needs to listen to my counsel, and I have to get in the room first. I oh, know. What if there is a way like that, actually? This might seem off-putting, but it is still an option of not having anyone say yes or no to it whatsoever. Just something to bring up. <clears throat> the Rubber Baron... ...trusts me with healing his men. Just today, he sent one of his sergeants over to the infirmary... ...and requested that I healed his men up for the second time. The sergeant over there, along with the lieutenant, and the many men that I have healed, begged me to stay. And from that given point, they even said that anyone close to me, within the decision of tomorrow or the next day after, to be brought into that keep. And to be safe from their oncoming infiltration upon Nardis. The biggest problem with that, we might be able to get in. It's getting out that's the problem. The man would have to be extracted and we'd have to fight our way out through what? Hundreds? It's impossible. We need to get him out of those places. We wouldn't have to necessarily fight our way out of everything. Just get through <sighs> enough that escape is possible. Out of the inner cord cordon raised like the act. Outside of the walls, give it a chance to run. <clears throat> Lure him out with promises of magic doorways or whatever. Once he's there, take him. Get veterans specifically to do it. Hairbrain scheme that we need to spend lives to maybe make happen. What? What is the choice to do, Allow the Imperials to march in our stead? At the moment, oh, that shit. looks like our only choice. God, so you have to understand the position I'm in. <clears throat> I speak to the to Baron Amel, and he knows that he could use my advice, and he knows that I have the experience to advise him. He acknowledges this. Because of what Kovaz has done. It's not a standstill anymore. It's not starving us out anymore. His act of aggression has given him the justification that he needs to start pushing south. Because of this. Conflict. He needs men now. He needs soldiers now. And the only ones that can come here... Are those fucking ships? The Kalari dynasty, if you heard a few days ago, raised the Narian Bridge. They're so afraid of an insurrection that they've cut off this third, no, fourth of Gradia from the rest of their fucking country. So unless we're expecting help to come from, I don't know, fucking Bel Shoy up to the north, no, no one's coming, and we're cut off by sea and by land. I cannot negotiate because I have nothing to replenish his ranks with. If we use the Imperials to fight, that is going to give them all the better position when we need to neutralize them politically after all is said and done. This aim is going to be so very much harder. And if what is on those Dude, ships is on <laughs> those ships. <clears throat> See, so I'm asking you to consider it. Short-term gain and long-term loss? Does the capture of the Stand. robber baron fix that, though? We would have men back. We wouldn't need the MC, though. That's what yes, I'm saying. If we can capture him and execute him, and that they do believe the amnesty... We have two days. We don't have to use the Imperials, and then we can treat them as we so wish. But if we're forced to rely on their soldiers to win a war, then all 
of a sudden they have a lot more leverage in any future negotiation. Including which... None of this Ooh. matters unless a mem agrees. I cannot supersede him. After what happened, he doesn't even trust his own men. According to my insiders, only four actually had four soldiers four. that quote unquote be guarded. Yeah, only four. At all times, when he goes to room to room to room, it's always the same four. No more, no less. It will have to be this another situation like the Capitol. Province has been allowed to fall into ruin and rot. It it will take time for it to be pulled out, but time is the one thing we don't have. Right. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here, Titi. I want you to try Listen. and answer them as honestly as you think. We have, what, two days until the Imperials arrive? No, today is over. We have one day. Galil's scouts have returned this morning. The ships have been seen at the edge of the province. They will be here the Imperial after survive. tomorrow. The Imperials arrive, it's game over. If we can't secure the Robber Baron, it's game over. If the Robber Baron succeeds and takes over this province, it's game over. All of that is fixed by capturing the Robber Baron. <laughs> I don't and see what the issue is. Day, we can wait no longer. We have to do something. Again, the backup plan would have worked if Kovaz did not start a war. Going there and forcibly putting a mem on the throne, he would have seen that he was safe and he had people he could command. He would have been able to take control of his dynasty. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter if we do that for a man, because he needs manpower to deal with a very real threat that is pushing south as we speak. He needs the Imperials. I cannot negotiate anything. I cannot replace the army he needs. Not in a single bloody day. <sighs> Kovacs. I mean, we probably need to start thinking about the robber baron, and only that, considering. If, if we get our hands on him, we might not need to fight our way out, depending on how the his keep is built. I, the one of, Shurik was there, right? There might be hidden ways out. Uh, people in charge love their hidden alleyways and hidden tunnels and such. There usually is. A w easy way out that we might be able to smuggle him right on out actually they they say they would send a message have servant halls <laughs> different places yeah. where servants would go up and through what if you didn't have to go up to the keep for it mm -hmm. are you alive yep What's the question? When you were there, did you notice any possible hidden doorways, alleyways, servant walkways and such? I didn't notice it, but it's entirely possible. It's a rundown keep. It's not like a proper keep in itself, like the one to the north. So it's entirely possible there may even be weaknesses in the walls we could exploit if that's the, if that's the path we want to go down. That's one option. Seems like the most direct. I can tell which person would be. Fucked. The sergeant told me that within tomorrow and the next day after, they'll send in messages to talk with me to talk about if I'm able to go up to that keep or not. 
If there's a way that I can convince him for that robber baron to come out of that keep and for us to and for me and him to try and at least talk about quote unquote talk about the people coming in for me to bring then maybe that can be the closest chance we've got. That's a pretty small window, I I've healed a lot of his men twice. Did you ever answer that question, Sharik? Uh, yeah, I gave it my best approximation. He said it's possible with the state of the keep. Possible. Possible, not guaranteed. But Soma says he has a window of opportunity then. If I can convince the robber baron himself. Let alone the given fact that I've trained that I've just about trained one of it one of his other s smaller folk of the ways of of a physician. There's one small issue with all of this. Let's say we have a miracle. The gods smile on us, and we are able to capture the robber baron. He's executed. Amnesty is given. Another seven hundred troops are brought into the fold. And then the Baron of Mem decides he still wants the Imperial ships here. What then? Mm. Oh, he has expressed me, that his concern about the Orcs. And that he feels that halberds and shot will deal with them better than crossbows and swords. I think you would need to tell him exactly what's on that ship and what it means that's <sighs> what I don't think he's unaware the initial conversation that brought things to this point and that gunnery sergeant verified this it would have included that kind of information It may have included that kind of information, Azim. But you know what convinced me about it? It was sitting down in front of you and seeing it in your eyes when you talked about it. That kind of terror, that fear, I felt... You need to be on the council for that. Not for running to Baron Amem to squeal on you. It convinced me to help you. Because I saw something in there that I do not want here. And I can promise you Baron Amem would not want that here either. If you can make him see like you made me see. <clears throat> there is a big difference between a man who wants the best for his province and a young lordling that wants to fill his father's shoes. <sighs> is young, he's inexperienced, and he will need all the help he can get, Azim, but he is not some dullard. He's not I'm some... I'm not saying he's a dullard, but you don't learn these things in one fucking day. And that's all the time we have. Azim, let me, let me yes. ask you this. Um, I need to speak with you. Say what you were going to say, even though I won't speak again. Oh, I thought you said that this robber baron thought highly of the baroness. Is that correct? <sighs> I haven't heard much about that. Those are questions to ask Sharik. <laughs> Come explain minute. yourself. Sharik, what about the baroness? He's going to show you a chip that he's holding with the king's sigil on it. How fond are they with the, uh... The last option. Incredibly. Called up by a first name only. Incredibly. I don't know what will happen. I need you to come with me. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. 
what if I'm saying it's possible, but what if, say, the next day, the Baroness's mind was set right? Would she take the mantle of Baroness officially and tell those ships to be turned around? And do you think the robber Baron would give up his claim if he knew that she was in good health and she was actually commanding the barony? I was kind of curious of that. If you could somehow I, uh, cure her of her grief for a day, she was strong enough to help Jodar rule quite a bit, in fact. I do not doubt she would take to it quite strongly. I do not you think, think my people the robber baron would back down, though. If the robber baron no. Succeeds, As then, all you would say is that the family has displayed a gross negligence of rulership. And why should they allow some grief stricken woman we to rule? can't stop this. I just want to watch your opinion of it. If it wasn't that you could hear you her yelling, crying at night from time to time, this. if she I hadn't done that, I don't know what's maybe inside, that's and when I don't know what will happen when I read this. Sometimes you can still hear her crying for help. My last word. If you couldn't magically cure her, she would have to put on an immediate display of power. I was just curious, what? that's all. What is this about the robber baron and the baroness? What, what connection is there? Just says he don't he... seriously suggest it. No, he just said that he cared about her a lot. I don't really give a fuck what his personal relationship was with her, but he said he cared for her and Judah a lot. He loved the Radards as a family. He was close to her as a friend. What if... The way he spoke about her, I don't know, he might listen to her if that was, that miracle was to happen. Because the whole reason he's supposedly doing this is because he doesn't believe the two kids that are in power right now are the best for the province. That's his whole mission statement. If someone else more in... What if... What if he believed she was speaking to him? Find out why the elves Do you think that could get him alone somewhere? And to get somewhere away from his keep? In the High King, King Iandar. You have to play it very carefully. If you require this. a diplomatic envoy of sorts, I am and well versed power in the diction that. and mannerisms of the higher courts. Any plan to try and take the robber baron is going to be near suicidal. But if it's still an option we're considering... That sounds... We just need him out of the keep. Do not open it He's fond of Vezrin. We have an open invitation. It, no, we don't want to be in the fucking keep. That's where he's at his strongest. Was fond of Vezrin. What happened? Don't know they're standing right now. Well, last I spoke to him, which was only a couple of days ago, I don't think that's changed. When he came to uh, ask for the town to surrender to him, Vez met him on the road and said, Hey, what have you surrendered and such? And the uh, conversation didn't go as planned. It, they still were friendly-ish terms, but I think at the... Not as great as it was, mayhaps. Well, it's still there, still and... Decent. At yeah. the very least, myself and Sarah have gained a reputation with him, if not so my himself. So... Yeah. We have options if we want to bait him out, but it's hard to bait him out specifically and not his troops. It needs to be something personal. Mm, or we catch him moving in between the two keeps that he has. But if we do that, he'll have a retinue with him. As despicable as it was, that is why I suggested using the Baroness's name. Because if he cares so Assuming much for her, this can be executed as intended. Her name could get him to move. He'd need proof. He knew that there'd be subterfuge he about. The age of our allies. He would expect it. It wouldn't be easy. 
Maybe. Hey, I'm laying siege to your fucking capital, and I have all the cards. And then someone comes along and says, Oh, you should come out and totally meet this thing that we know that you care about in the woods. No, fuck no, I'm not doing that. A man blinded by caring for someone can do very stupid things. We have a few buttons we can press with him. Right, we're trying to figure out the best strategic one. What about the non I'm able... I haven't even brought that up. Oh. I don't think he would go there is, personally. Is, uh... What if we use that as a distraction? Is this keep along any sort of waterway? The river or a small creek no. or anything? No, soldiers would be focused no. on the No, cops. not even close. Fuck. Maybe. Inspecting it, making sure that they're actually... It is in the middle of the... He has 700, if not 800... That sucks. ...troops. He has enough to spare to look at some carts and maintain security. Especially a, a, an honor guard just for oh, him, for which is you. the crux of what we're trying to, to get through. There's probably a sewer, so someone that leads straight to a waterway. Not with the that number. Out of window now. We gotta have more of them when we get But then we get back to the main part of trying to get them out of the city underneath the Baron's noses as well. We have people that can move through the forest, even with a captive in tow. <sighs> Lots of ideas, but nothing concrete. Quite, quite I'm gonna right, sleep right. and let my mind deal with it. Let me know if you dream of still need me. No, take some rest. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to think on something, alright? Mm -hmm. I know. We're smarter than this, yeah? I'm sure we can think of something. I am certain of. Mm -hmm. I pray for tomorrow. Favor is. Of course. I'll see you. Uh, fine. We're not going to be able to use this favor if we don't live is. long enough if for willing, it. Then. And that's what we're complaining about, that we're not going to live long enough for it. That was wrong. So why don't you just use the favor now, so we Depending have time. how old the keep is, I might Zim be able to recognize to. some of the hidden hallways. I've He's saying that we can definitely capture him, but pathways. we don't know how. Tenor below. So, I don't know, figure that one out, navigate through that. Um, I'm gonna get some sleep. If they Good night, everyone. Good night, Shereek. That is a seven. Do with that as you will. I have a feeling I should still need convincing using with what I've got. Uh, 